Hey guys, so today we're just going to be looking at Newton's laws, and in particular, obviously, uh, the, all the different types of laws that we have here and below. Um, hopefully by the end of this PowerPoint you can have a look at an example of an image like this over here with the basketball shooting, and you can apply the three of the Newton's laws to this example over here. So here we go. Uh, there's the first law of motion which states that um, a body remains at rest or tends to remain at rest until uh, an external force is placed upon it, okay, or it will continue uh, in motion at a consistent speed unless acted upon by an external force. So the soccer ball is going to remain at rest until the person over here kicks it in this direction. Uh, likewise, Jonah Lomu running over here. He's going to continue running in the same direction, the same speed until an external force, which is the person tackling him, <coughs> it fix his, um, his movement. So basically if an object's in motion, it keeps going until something stops it, as the two examples show over here. And same thing with the soccer ball, you have an example over here. And if you have a look at the examples below, uh, some of the things that could possibly affect the inertia or the ball traveling, the soccer ball, could be things like the grass. So if we had the long grass over there, or even had a goal, then obviously that would stop the ball. Uh, so that is an external force. This law is called obviously the law of inertia. Uh, second law is law of acceleration. This talks about a body is changed only when acted upon by an additional force. So, in other words, um, the example below of the power lifter, okay, that there is only going to um, move in a or accelerate in a certain direction um, and accelerate at a certain speed, and it's in proportion to the amount of force placed upon it. So when he lifts it up, so he puts the force in and he lifts it up this way, the bar is only going to get lifted at a certain speed and that's only going to be dependent on the amount of force he places in it. Uh, same thing with a baseball player, if he hits a ball twice as hard as he normally does, then that ball is going to go further uh, than what it would normally be. So it's also going to speed up at twice the rate. Uh, last example obviously is a football player and they can slow down uh, stop or reverse or change directions. So a good example obviously is Sean Johnson. Okay, and his example is how he can sidestep from side to side. Okay, and obviously change direction. Um, so that's another good example obviously of them being able to generate force in certain directions. Last of all is the third law, and um, this one is the law of action-reaction, and it just talks about um, for every kind of force that's produced, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so action-reaction. Um, now, this one also can be applied to sports in a couple of ways. Um, if you think about swimming, all right, so if we've got a person swimming and there's her arms and her hands okay when she pulls back in her swimming stroke this way over here all right obviously there's the action okay the counter force is the equal opposite reaction so therefore she moves forwards in the water so you've got your action okay and then you've got your reaction here. Um, same thing we did with the uh, crash mats with the blue mats in terms of jumping and uh, the amount of force placed in it and the ground surface. Um, if an athlete can jump higher off a solid surface than in sand, and the reason why is that there is as much force to oppose the jump. So remember if we jumped back on the crash mats we sunk down, there wasn't enough force to oppose it, therefore we couldn't jump as high. Uh, whereas if we jumped on a concrete surface that was a lot more solid, or on the grass field that was harder, then we would go further. 
Here's the last few questions for you to work through. Uh, first one is obviously what are the three laws that we've just spoken about? So there's the first, second, and third law. What are they? Uh, give an example of each law applying it into a sporting context. And if you go back and you have a look at each of the laws, you've got the first law and you've got some sporting contexts and some examples, as you can see right over here, uh, that are really, really handy for you to use. And obviously, down in here, if you look at all the bottom parts, we have some examples for you to use. Make sure that you do go through and you apply a sporting example to each of their three laws. That's the third one. And then uh, the second, uh, it's the last question. Uh, what are some factors that can affect how an object travels? So for example, obviously, kicking a soccer ball on a grass field. Okay, what are some things that are going to affect that ball in particular? Obviously, if you have a look at things like the grass, how is the grass going to impact on the ball and how far it travels? Okay, or a rugby post and a rugby ball going over the post. Uh, what are some things that are going to be impacting on that? And then obviously the final question is to choose a physical activity that interests you and have a go at applying um, the three laws to this. In particular, use examples from the slide to give you a better understanding.